25,000, the biggest crowd in the history of the match. They show up here today. What kind of an effect will that have crowd noise-wise if you're Central Michigan? Well, uh, let's talk Western Michigan first because I think if you have an advantage, it's the 12th man on the football field. Of course, if you've got 30,000 delirious football fans yelling for you, you kind of intimidate the visitors. And of course, Central Michigan is a veteran football team as well as a talented one. I think Herb Zorabity is going to have to do all he can to keep these young men stable at the outset of this football game because it's going to be bedlam here. Coach Zorabity certainly has had the key ingredient to winning against Western Michigan. In his last 11 tries, he is 9-1-1. On the team, the deep receiver football, Alan Boyko, and of course the freshman sensation, Ulrich King. Ulrich King, a player that you're going to see plenty of before it is all said and done here this afternoon. There's a good look at the official crew, and they'll have their work cut out because there'll be some football being thrown around here this afternoon. The MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week, live. A little bit of a breeze, King can't quite handle it, and so Western Michigan will start first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Pretty good offensive line, Thomas Eastman, Miller, Brodbeck, Walker, and of course an outstanding tight end in Bruce Boyko. And a look at the skill people for the Broncos. His brother, Allen, who will play at the split end. Blanker Ulrich King, we've mentioned him. Brad Tails, an outstanding freshman quarterback. And there you see a pretty good running crew as well. Only one running back utilized by Western Michigan, though, Reggie Luck. A little different look. They want to spread the team to out, get the defense, spread across the field, and try to hit those zones. Tail 66 to 152 on the season throwing the football and comes up and calls it audible on the very first play. Didn't take long to go to the air. The wind blowing in around, but Boyko comes up with a reception across the 45. This is a flood pattern. They send Cookley down the middle and Boyko right behind him. Boyko makes a great catch and is back to the defense. And that's David Johnson, number 16, along with Ken Strong, making the stop. Good start, though, for Brad Taylor. He's got to get that confidence early. That's number 10 on the season for Boyko. There goes the pitch to Michael Green, the tailback, who gets outside of the defense, and he's in the Central Michigan playing area for the first time this afternoon. Now, Al Moldy. Kenny would have been my kind of coach because he throws first and runs second. <laughs> uh, the defensive line, McKinney, Alexa, and also Larenga. Three pretty talented guys up front. Leading linebacker Rick Curtis. He's the top ten for Clarence Rose. A good one. And so is Mark Dennis on the outside. And four juniors in the secondary. All very capable secondary performers for her around it. Second down and three. Broncos off to a very quick start. Green again off right tackle. This time has to cut it back up inside. Green will not give up until he gets the first down. Well, see, Green is a big-time player. Last year at Junior College All-America, they were looking for his return. He's been injured. But what Weston does, as you see here, is they spread everybody across the field. The defense doesn't have the kind of coordination that comes with being close to each other, being able to talk to each other. And that is a real advantage for the Broncos. This time it's Boyko and Ulrich King put out one into the left. Allen Boyko in the top. Play action. Tails over the middle with it. This one packs around and nearly coming up with the interception, David Johnson. James Cooper right in there making that play, number 22. And this is what we talked about as far as making decisions from Tails. Now Tails has an opportunity to hit Ulrich King right now, but he passes King up for the deeper throw, and that was thrown right into coverage. Tails is fortunate that he doesn't have that pass intercepted. We mentioned 14 interceptions thus far on the season for the freshman quarterback. And Thompson of the American Conference rolls up to his left. A quick hitter has Bruce Boyko, and he is upended, really clobbered. Initial hit provided there by one of the quarterbacks, Kenny Strong. Also, Gino Marchetti, number 24, 
in on that up ending tackle. Now that was a good decision by Tails because he came out on the sprint and he had a receiver right there and he gave the football to him. And that's the kind of thing that I'm sure Molden wants Tails to do. Take what the defense gives you. This time it's Bruce Boyko in the slot right. Third down and three. Opening drive for the Broncos and the officials step in and call time. Uh, Western's having a pretty good go right now, and I don't think that Jeromedy is happy with the way his defense is playing right now. They're just off balance. Three receivers to the right. The handoff to Green inside, and second effort may just get him the first down. It looks like he might have enough. You're right, second effort. Number 54, Clarence Rose, makes that first pop. Rose is always everywhere for the Chippewas, an outstanding linebacker. In fact, I like this entire linebacking core of the Chippewas. Here again is Green going right in. And you see Curtis with the first hit, number 38, and James Williams, number 15, cleans up. When you talk about Michael Greenred, the player who is coming off an injury, as we've got an official call here. He got illegal motion, Jenny. We didn't see that. No, we didn't. So it brings up now third down and six. An obvious passing situation to make that point on Green, though. Averaging 5.2 yards per carry when he is healthy. Ideal kind of a bat right in the middle of the field and this one back attack. He's got explosion and quickness. Ryan started on Western Michigan's 20 yard line. On the delay. Green tripped up right at the line of scrimmage and with a hand in on the tackle, Rick Curtis. Nice tackle by Rick Curtis, but I want to see who it was that made Green do the dance because he's the guy actually that caused this tackle. Right here on the left of the screen, you can't see the number, but that tackle, the would-be tackle, who was Rick Curtis, sort of made him sidestep it in this tackle by Rose. Well, the first big call for Al Moldy. Fourth down and two, and the ball is on the 33. Fans are getting to their feet here. Tails rolling right under pressure, throws it up for Graham. Oh, broken up at the last moment by Kenny Stone on a beautiful defensive play. Boyko was the intended receiver. Tremendous play by Ken Strong in recovery because Boyko was out there five yards all along for the touchdown and a great play. And we'll go over the football. First down and 10 from about the 33. Bender rolls left. And this one, high outside, intended for Kenny Ellis. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Hopkins, Eagle, uh, Bates, Doolin, uh, Greco, and also uh, Wyatt, who is now starting at the uh, right tackle. Tailback is Wiley, quarterback Jeff Bender, after two foot receivers, is Ely, and Ken Kensu, who is the first defensive receiver for Central Michigan. Brings up 10 and 10, 11.40 left to go here in the opening quarter. There's the drop play. Riley has the running room. A flag on the play. Riley takes out of bounds across the field and about the 48. Well, we told you about number 34. I think they're going to bring this play back. And watch how strong this young man is. He's 5'10", 195 pounds, but you're not going to bring him down with arm tackles. Extremely fine balance right there. And as Johnny Riley shows why he's one of the top running backs in the Mid-American Conference. Now that run of nearly 20 yards, he erased by the penalty. Let's not forget something about Jeff Bender. Even though they have an outstanding running attack, he can throw the football too. No question about that. Coming into this one, he is ranked second in the MAC in total offense. If you take a look at the defensive crew, Lindsey and Cruz on the outside are outstanding. Sean Moher in the leading tackler for Western Michigan. And experience in balance and secondary to move on with that. Tailback, Riley, really smacked hard as he crosses the 25 out to about the 26, and maybe he got a nice hit on him there. <laughs> Mangy's going to be getting a lot of nights nice from a lot of people today. It's 6'6". Six, six. They say he runs a 4 5 40. I'd like to see that. Uh, he's about 265. Excellent physical stuff. Maybe it's downwind. <laughs> Downhill. Ah. Well, this time it's Ely put out wide to the left. Yes, the flanker to the right. High formation for the Chippewa. Third and 17. No 
one up top for Ely. And he fights the sun, tries to come back from the ball, or through the ball, I should say. Ran right over the top of Scott Bell, and no call there in the second year. Scott Bell had pretty good coverage on the play. I thought that that pass needed to be thrown with a little more velocity here. He's much better. He just lays it up a little too high. The wind now starts to affect the football, drifts the ball back inside. Ely was looking outside. Winners back to punt from inside his own 15 yard line, Looney. The return for the Broncos. First punt of the afternoon, good pressure. Beautiful punt. Looney to 27. Once the side step goes north and south and he tackled at about the 33. So Reggie, both teams have had a chance to run the ball on the offense a little bit, get a feel for the defense. What do you suspect might happen then? Well, I thought, especially what we saw in those first two series, where a little bit of sparring going on, testing each other out before they really start to execute their real game plan. And I think for Western, they want to throw the football, keep people wide. And I think at some point, once they get control, or when they think they have control, they're going to start to get the football to Michael Green ball. Second possession for the Broncos to an 11 game losing streak to Central Michigan here last year. Counter play. Great. Now goes it out to about the 35 yard line. One thing you have to remember when you're using that trip right formation where you have three receivers on one side and one running back against these outstanding linebackers from Central, from Central Michigan, there's no lead blockers in it, so that running back is going to have to work for his, for his yardage a great deal of time on his own. Second down and nine for Bronco. Early stage of the quarter number one. There's a flag in the backfield, and Tails dropped right to the back of the third time. The Lecture putting on great pressure. Tails felt someone coming and stepped up in the pocket, and of course, the pocket collapsed around him. Good defense by the Chippewa. And don't forget to stay tuned to Sports Channel for the best of NHL action tonight at 8.30. The Chicago Blackhawks face out against the St. Louis Blues. National Hockey League live on Sports Channel. Not available in all areas, so check your local listing. So after the penalty, ball now steps back to approximately the 25 yard line, which brings up second down now in 19. Well, the young, long yardage formation doesn't affect Western Michigan like it might most football teams because this is a passing football team and they're used to getting the football downfield, so they aren't intimidated by a long yardage situation. Toronto is currently ranked fourth in the Mid American Conference in passing, going for nearly 200 yards a game. Lorenda, if you look at him go off the field now, watch him now, come from the right side of your screen, I think it'll be. There he is, beating the block, and then getting tails down. This Central Michigan defensive team, we've seen them before, they have excellent team speed, and that can be a, uh, a very big advantage for you when you're playing against a good offensive team like Western Michigan. Third down and 20 yards to go, first and 10 for the Bronco. That's what we were talking about at the outset of this football game. A very big key for Western Michigan. Does Tails make the right decision here? Obviously not. You can see there, Rick Curtis is sitting right in that lane. That's an opportunity for the quarterback to get rid of the football or run with it. There's another look at it coming right at you. He throws this football right into coverage. He's done that about three times already today. It burned him there. This time he paid the price with 15 interception on the season and superb field position for the Chippewa on the back of 39. Good kick for Ryland. Oh, oh, oh. Turns it up inside and finally wraps up the house of 31. I'm telling you, great running backs don't look at the first tackle. Then they look 
at the second tackle because he knows he's going to get rid of the first man. Now watch this good move here. Now cut right back inside. See, good cutting ability, good swivel. He's got great hip. He's a fine goal. Offensive coordinator dream at this stage. Ealing in motion. Riley again, Brian got four to five more yards, down to the 25. We have the classic matchup of these two football teams. One team wants to throw the heck out of the football, the other team wants to run it. And of course, the team that runs effectively knows that it will also consume time on the clock and keep the other guy off the field. Averaging nearly four and a half yards per carry thus far in the season of Riley in the last two weeks. He's really exploded. Cuts it back up inside again with about two more yards on the play. When we saw Riley a few weeks ago, he was coming off the injury. I heard about it and I watched him and I thought, he's just a step slow to me. But today, I know we're playing on artificial turf, but he's a lot quicker today. We're talking to Herb Durami yesterday, Reggie. He said that Riley is still not 100% of the team. Off ankle and knee and this one problem for all season long. Back and down play from the Chippewa. This scoring position for the first line of the pass for the inning. It would appear at this point that Tony Bates jumped offside at the left offensive guard for Central Michigan. Pump fake player and play that picks up a couple of yards, not much. Not only on the second. Talking about Greg Krause being a part of that excellent defensive line for the Broncos. He was the guy that made the play there. Krause, 250 pounds, 6'4", showing excellent agility, getting up the field and getting back to make the pass. Central Michigan operating with about a 10 mile an hour breeze behind him. Kevin Nichols, one of the outstanding play stickers anywhere in the country, would more than likely be in range here if they don't get the first down. because it didn't appear that Donnie Rowling wanted to go down. And we talked about his size, 5'7", 195 pounds, but extremely strong. And now you're going to watch one of the top field goal kickers around do his thing. Well, basically a 39-yard attempt for Kevin Nichols, who is 11 for 13 off the season. Low snap! A beautiful job oh. of setting it down, though, and the Chippewas come away with a 3-0 lead. You talk about a pair of fast hands. Did Todd Winters ever do a, a very good job there getting that ball down? Yeah, he had lots of problems, but he did get it down, and it was a 39-yard field goal. We'll take a break now in the action and return after this commercial message. First to the board here this afternoon, Reggie Rogers. Six plays, 17 yards after the interception by Curtis. Uh, they would like to have had a touchdown, but at least they came away with something. And there's one thing you'd like to do in this particular situation, playing on the road, big crowd, big game, go first. Last year they led 14-7 to at the end of the first quarter, and it didn't seem to make much difference. Point go at his goal line. Nobody there to block, and he was trapped at the 15-yard line, and boy, what a heck of a job by the special team. That was one of those situations where the wedge ran off and left the runner. <laughs> and at that time, it's stuck. Look out. Boyko didn't have anywhere to run. Alan Boyko looked up and saw nothing but unfriendly white jerseys in a crowd. That must be a nice feeling to have your twin brother playing and starting on the same football team. But I know the parents are very proud of those two young men. Now they're both ranked in the top 10 all-time receiving here at Western Michigan. Of course, Allen with another year to go. Bruce is a senior. Very productive receiver. Quick pitch. Green tries to hustle outside. The pursuit catches up with him. Maybe a couple of yards on the play. Mike Kessler, the initial tackle. Green looks to be limping just a little bit. I think it was an ankle that he had problems with earlier. 
for the rushing yards for them. It is two balls for them. Thank you. Both still running through from the rest of the passing team. That's a good thread. You ran number one in the conference of stopping the run as well. Not easy to take it up inside against the chip of water. Dino Marchetti in there again, and we talked about Dino Marchetti and that very famous name that he carries there as well. Of course, his uncle was the great name, Dino Marchetti, for the Baltimore Post for so many years, the Hall of Fame. He knew what to do with the football when he liked to go into it. Started learning that probably about the age of six months. <laughs> Michigan Kapler smothered it, and what a big break for the Chippewa. Great call, no question about it. That's a fumble. Tails, arm was not in the forward motion. Watch it right in the string. Waringa coming around the back side. Ball's loose on the ground. Here's another look at it. Now watch the arm. If the quarterback's arm is going forward, this would be an incomplete pass. So as you'll see, no, it isn't. Great call. Well, the Chippewas in excellent position right now, and a penalty also tacked on. Personal foul called against the Broncos. Central Michigan sets up shot first and ten at the seven. There you saw once again evidence of that good team speed that Central Michigan has defensively. 4:24 left to go here in quarter number one. Central Michigan leads three to nothing, and they're trying to add more right now. With a first and ten, first and goal to go from about the seven and a half. And it's first out. Whistles it into the end zone, and Ely was hoping for some kind of a call, didn't get much, and it's incomplete. It was a good decision by Denver because he didn't get caught with that good ball, and he got rid of it so that he didn't lose any yardage. One thing I wanted to say about the defensive line of Central Michigan, when you're playing against Alley Who, people like and, and Cruz and Trout. I think it lifts the level of play because you know you're on the field with top quality people and you want to show those guys that you're a good kid. Second down the play. On the draw, Riley shoots inside as he oh, ever yeah. dives into the end zone. What a beautiful run for Riley who scores the first touchdown again this year for the Triple War. Now he did straight blocking at the point of attack because his offensive line is an extraordinary one. But you can't see what Raleigh has, and what he has is a great gift for keeping his feet moving and selecting holes and doing it instinctively. Now watch this. If you watch the lower part of his body, you'll see all the cuts. You'll see the action taking place with his legs as they move instinctively to open areas. And another thing, he's always going forward. To provide the extra point, and so the Chippewas now lead 10 to nothing. And of course, all 10 points coming as a result of a pair of turnovers. And this team apparently was primed to play. Now, of course, this field in the first quarter has a lot of action field to go yet. But I think if you're Central Michigan and Nerd Durandi, you're very happy with the way your football team has started. Because one, your defense is playing well, and two, your best player, Donnie Riley, you just saw him score there, is off to a great start. 17th career touchdown for number 34, who over the last three weeks has really come out of the shell, and if he continues to perform like this, that's going to be a tough team to beat. Yeah, because one thing, they, they control the clock, and they control the game, and you can't get your offense on the field, and Tails has already thrown one interception, and he's had a fumble. He's probably a little bit gun shy back here at this point in time. Well, it's nothing like starting your drive at the seven yard line only took them 10 seconds a couple of plays to score central michigan two and one in the mac right now is uh, looking pretty good in the early stage for this one you probably ought to point this out too because i think this win is affecting the passing game of western michigan a little bit more than you might think it's a pretty good first of win going with the football right now and i doubt they'll get a chance to return this He's going to bring it out and give it a try. The 15, out past 
the 20 to about the 22 yard line. And you know Boyko was telling him to stay in the end zone, and he brought that thing out anyway, and almost broke it all the way for a touchdown. Well, the Broncos will start first and 10 from their 22, and uh, other than the first play of the game, when Tails hit Bruce Boyko with about a 25-yard pass, the offense hasn't been able to generate much. Well, freshmen are susceptible to what happens around them, and Tails has not had any good things happen right now for him, so let's see if they don't start to do some real purifying plays that will take him off the hook right now. Starting left guard for Western Michigan, down for a, a moment or so, but uh, going to get back up and walk off the field. And we've got an update now from the sidelines about Michael Rega. You know, Denny and Reggie talking about the freshman Brad Hills. They say up in the press box here before the football game of Western Michigan, he has never seen a pass he didn't like, meaning that he'll throw the football anytime, anywhere. But you wonder if his confidence has been shaken a little bit with the problems he's had. We'll keep an eye on him. See, maybe if Al Moldy goes to his backup, Daryl Fortenberry. Back upstairs, you got you live and die with the pressure. Sometimes in a great place, other times you just scratch your head. But right now, I think Moldy is really concerned about his field position. He hasn't had good field position. Tails has had some problems. So he really doesn't want to put the put, put football out there so that he can turn it over to the Chippewas again. And we have another injured player down on the field. This one for Central Michigan. Todd Reynolds. Officials are trying to a timeout. 3.32 left to go here in the opening quarter. Thanks for missing the lead. It's 10 to nothing. Courtesy of a 39-yard field goal provided by Kevin Nichols. And then a 7-yard touchdown run by Donnie Riley. Don't forget Sports Channel's Pro Boxing Tour comes to you from Corpus Christi, Texas, live at 9 p.m. on Monday, October 16th. The main event will feature Martin North Portigan, who is 12-1 with 5 KOs. And he'll, of course, be fighting Roland Gomez, 19-3 and three with 11 KOs in a scheduled 12-round Phantom Wave bout. Not available in all areas, so make sure you check your local listings there. Well, Reynolds going to be helped off the field. It looks like a left ankle might be the problem, or perhaps a knee. A career record, there you see 83, 37, and 4. He is now tied at this point in time with Roy Kramer, number two on the all-time winning its list. And, uh, of course, 91 victories is hot, and it won't take Coach Saramity much longer to get to that stage. People like that bring credibility to your program, not only in what you do on the field, but in terms of attracting top quality high school athletes to your program. Central Michigan has turned out some tremendous professional prospects through the years under Coach Saramity. the first down. Delayed a green, nowhere to go, stacked up at the line of scrimmage and the entire defensive unit getting credit for the tackle. See, Al Moldy has become very concerned with the way Tails is playing, particularly deep in this end of the field. They have gone very conservative. That is not the way they want to play. Here it is again, a draw play, and you'll see left of the screen. They're just in, 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 anywhere to go as Loringa number 93 does an excellent job of neutralizing that block and just stopping that runner right there at the line of scrimmage. Tom Dunn back to punt for Western Michigan for the first time this afternoon. L.J. Muddy. Back deep and single safety for the Chippewa. Line drive kick into the wind. And it takes the Western back. It will finally be down if the wind never stops one at about the 32 yard line. So it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. And uh, we've also got another update now. Michael Ray got Benny Don Eastman, the starting offensive guard for Western Michigan, who missed that last series, has got an ankle. It got uh, a little bit twisted in that last set. He is having it looked at by the Western Michigan medical staff. No determination yet whether he's going to go back. Now, we're going to go over the other sideline when we get a check on Todd Reynolds, who just went down for Central Michigan. The well, injury is starting to hit both ball clubs here in the first quarter. Well, ankles 
Denny, I'll tell to come back on artificial surface than they are on grass. First and ten for the Chippewa. Langer reverse. Now Kent is going to throw it. He's got Ely wide open. Got him on the numbers. Ely may take it all the way, and he does. Holy cow, 68 yards on the flanker pass to Ely. Yes, now. That's it. That's the first thing you got to do, right? No question. 
back to the tailback. Oh, Green got stood up by Clarence Rose, and Rose just stuck his face mask right in the chest. Six feet tall, 220 pounds, very strong, and likes to lead that tackle with that helmet. When you do that, that runner isn't going anywhere. They say, you know, put that, put that face mask right on the number and drive them back, and that was textbook. They used to say, you aren't going anywhere without that team skin, brother. <laughs> this is six skin. 17 to nothing. Central Michigan on top. Right off right tackle. And I don't think we quite got this. It was third down and about one. And if Green got half a yard, it was a, a generous spot. Chippewa came off the ball right that, that time with great timing. That ball had hardly been snapped when that defensive front was into that backfield, neutralizing those blockers, and of course, the green had no place to go. And we have finished up quarter number one here at Kalamazoo. We'll now pause for this time. Chippewa leads 17 to nothing. We'll be back with more of the NBC Sports Channel game of the week right after this timeout. Fourth and one, he's going to kick it away and play some defense. He'll have the win now. End over end. Money grabs it at the 19. Trying to get to the outside and can't quite get there. Just up at about the 24 yard line. Let's see what Moldy does the next time the Broncos get the football game. Boy, passing yards. Look at Central Michigan. 70 on the ground, 70 in the air. But that balance can't beat it. You got people playing on both sides of the ball. Of course, West Division has balance too, but they're not doing anything with it. He's statistic in quarter number one, the two turnovers. Riley hit one point, spins around and is punished as he gets to about the 27 yard line. You're Herb Duramity, you're more or less going to try and run as much as possible right now, wouldn't you think, Reggie? No question about it. You've got a 17 point lead, you've got the best runner in the conference, you've got the best offensive line, why not keep it on the ground? Really slid out wide to the right, Ken. The flanker to the left. Michigan's offense has been extremely consistent thus far in this one, taking advantage of every situation. Oh, a cutback by Riley. Tries to step out of one tackle, and finally, all of the pursuit catches up with it. There's Riley again. This is good defense this time by Western. You're going to see Anthony Strong, number 20. He just wouldn't go for the moves with Donnie Rowley and holds on until help comes. Third down now in seven. Riley, off the delay, grabbed by the angel, Mark Nabosny, with a beautiful defensive play, and that will force the Chippewas to punt the ball away. Once again, we see the quickness of number 50, Martin Abosny, who was able to get down the line of scrimmage and track down Donnie Riley. Winters back inside his 15-yard line to punt, and this time it'll be into about a 10, 15-mile-an-hour breeze. Steve Looney back to the team. That was a good defensive series for Western. They needed that. Let's see what they do when they get the football with the win at their back. And he rushes on. The pressure was there, and a splendid hit into the win. Looney with a fair catch at the 31 yard line and Winters really hung that one up high into the breeze. I want to see who comes out to play quarterback because Tails has been shaken quite a bit in that first quarter. Let's see what happens when Tails operates with the window. I don't think he struggles trying to throw the ball into the head in there in quarter number one. Well, the thing that he needs to do, and it is Tails again, is he needs to just get at it. I mean, they throw the football, so just don't worry about the score. Don't worry about the pitching time. You don't have any control over that anyway. Let's start throwing the football downfield and get on with our game. 
developing into the star of the game defensively. He won't let Dale get on track because the best pass defense is a pass rush. And of course, the Chippewas are getting extremely good pressure from uh, the outside and the first of Warringah. And we'll get to that disclaimer right after this play. Well, the 11 left to go in quarter number two. Dale pressured out of the pocket, directs a little traffic, now he's got plenty of room if he doesn't get tackled from behind. Prince out of bounds at about the 45 yard line, enough for the first down. Now Dale feels the pressure this time and has good presence on the field. Now he knows he's better, he better get out of there. Kevin Rick, number 94. Is Tracking him down, now watch the high step right there, gets out of that tackle, gets out of bounds like a smart quarterback should. That was a, a positive approach to trying to pick up a first down. At 6'4 and over 200 pounds, the big fella turned on the speed. Better field position. Tails now with a little outlet pass to Green. Green gets back to the line of scrimmage and no more. bring up second down and 10. What this football team needs right now is a shot in their arm. And what they need is a big play. They need to get one of those Goyko or King, one of the big play people, into a situation which you get the football in the open and you're able to break something to get this football team on the scoreboard and back in the football game. Well, the team that normally likes to make big plays and they haven't been able to do much of that this afternoon, credit central defense. Looking for an open receiver. And he had him and Alan Boyko. Boyko had it, lost it, and got drilled in the process. Boyko is a sure-handed receiver, and that's a pass that he could catch ten times out of ten. A good setup by by Tails. Driven the ball. Now watch it right at the screen. Just didn't hold it. David Johnson providing the leather on the hit. Third down and ten. Numbers a little de deceiving thus far for Tail. It really has not been effective. Of course, the field position hasn't been the greatest for one of the Michigan. Triple Wads are coming. Tail pressured out of the pocket. He breaks the perimeter, though, and he's going to have to run near the first down as he was tackled at about the 44, and that's going to be within the length of a football for a first down. And Lavelle Van Horn threw an exceptional block of coming back. Good hit, which allowed Tails to get down that sideline. I don't know if we'll see it here, but watch this as Lavelle Van Horn comes out of nowhere just six, I think it's James Hill. Watch number three. Boom, right there. You can't see it, but that was the block that sprung Tails down the sideline. The receivers get down fields in and running patterns. And you have to look to keep your head in the game and see what's going on. Come back and help the quarterback. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Mid American Conference and Sports Channel Ohio. It is intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast, or any other use of this telecast without the prior written consent of the Mid-American Conference and Sports Channel Ohio is strictly prohibited. First down and 10, and the Tails, who normally does it through the air, has sparked his team on the ground. It isn't pretty right now for Weston, but they're getting it done. They're moving the football somehow. That's all that matters. Just start moving. Oh, uh, triple man. 17 and up here. Jesus just joined us. Central Michigan on top. That was on the ground, and... A western bounce ends up back to covered by Hale. Very fortunate indeed. That could have been turnover number three. That was Jason Wilkie who jumped offside. It was essentially a free play for Western. Green just took his eyes off that football. So they'll step off to five yards. And instead of near disaster, Marco is presented with a first down and five. There's a heads up play by Tails, however, as he saw the football on the pocket and got on it quickly. 
been the home team that has made the mistakes thus far. Central Michigan playing on the road. Doing an outstanding job of stopping a high-powered offense. Official whistle and uh, will hold up play for just a moment. Something down on the field. The official lost his ball marker. Something that he throws down when he wants to stop the football. Right. Where it was caught out of bounds or something like that. Defensive play turned in by Kenny Strong. King was running right underneath oh, that pass. You saw some speed on this play. I knew it wasn't going to be long before Tails tries to get it all. He's got his fastest man, King, going down the left side. And Ken Strong, watch the speed right there. Great coverage as King was about to catch the ball. And here comes number five, Kenny Strong, who knocked that ball away. Kenny Strong, probably the most talented one-on-one -on -one coverage guy. In. Central Michigan secondary and turned in a beautiful play there. Second down and five. On the counter play, Green sidesteps and dragged down at the 36 yard line. I like that call because he had second down and five yards to go. Spread the field, get the football to Green on a draw play. He picks up four yards, gives himself an opportunity now. To get up, go ahead and pick up the first down. And let's check in with Michael Reagan down the sideline. Get ahead of Sam Smith to talk with the touchdown duo here from Central Michigan. Uh, Bobby Kenson threw the football out of three flickers for the evening he caught it. They told me simply, we worked that it all week. We knew it was there. Just waiting for the moment to hit it. And boy, did they hit it big. Back to you. 16 yards big in for a touchdown. Green gets to the outside and drag down. Maybe a face pass call. But no. And on the tackle, Dan Williams, who just flat one power is the big fella. Michael Green is a quality running back. He's 15 tall, 226 pounds, and he can foul out fly. You can see the strength right there. It's hard for them to bring this big guy down with one man, particularly those cornerbacks. And he can be a factor in this ball game if Sales can get this offense going out of the chance again. contact right there. King falls to the turf. And here comes David Johnson on the return. I think that's three interceptions in the first half. Another look at it. That was Lavelle Van Horn, excuse me, that he was the intended receiver. Back to live action as Riley takes it off left tackle. 
And now we've got a flag being thrown, maybe. And also Mark Hopkins going at each other a little bit. Maybe did something that I think is uncharacteristic of a classy player. A little bit out of frustration, I would think. Well, a pair of offsetting fouls. Ninth interception career-wise for David Johnson, who was the second team All-MAC player a year ago. Chippewas have played brilliantly here in the opening half of football. Western Michigan defending Max champion. They played in the California Bowl. This is the 60th winner against the Big West winner, Daniel. No way in the world you'd have convinced me it would have been 24 to nothing at this stage. Bender rolls out. It's his receiver. Ball squirts loose. It's on the ground. And it's still rolling around. Central Michigan coughing it up. And Western Michigan with their first break of the afternoon. It appeared to be L.J. Muddy couldn't hang on to the ball. It appeared to be shot down. Number 36 that makes a big play. They still don't want to untangle themselves over on the far sideline. And so uh, at this point in time, after the change of possession, we'll be back with more of the MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week right after this. Sales has been getting into people's hands, unfortunately, than Central Michigan has three interceptions thus far as Western Michigan goes to the ground for a pickup of about three yards. The most lopsided victory for Central Michigan in this series dates back to 1974 when Central Michigan won 42 to 6. And now they're heading in that direction. Broncos 1 and 1 in conference. The Lions have won their last two. Tail with a rifle shot. Up to about the 42 yard line here is Lavelle Van Horn. I'm kind of surprised, Reggie, that they haven't thrown more of the, of the cutting tight patterns uh, because they appear to be open. Yeah, what happens when you get behind by 24 points? This seems to be a sense of urgency being a young and experienced quarterback. You don't understand that there's still enough time to get back into the football game, but you can't score 24 points on one play. You've got to get the first touch. First down and 10. On the counter play. Bogan. Out near midfield. And uh, Danny Bogan with some tough running yards. Just kept putting his head down, grinding him out. Bogan's a big back. You see right here, 235 pounds just trampling over people. And they know they still have an opportunity in this football game, but they've got to get a good drive going. They all need to pick up some confidence, and more than anything else, they need to secure the football. No fumbles and no interceptions. Logan on the pitch, turns it upfield, and dives inside to about the 42 yard line. Martelli in on the tackle. I think the, the Chippewas right now is just it's kind of soft. Don't let anybody get deep. Don't let them have anything quick. Keep everything in front of you and play defense that way. Meanwhile, it's going to be up to Western to find a way to get some points and get them back. 637 and the clock rolling here in the second quarter of play. 24 to nothing. Central Michigan trying to blow out Western Michigan. Over the middle. Beautiful catch that time. Turned in at about the 28 yard line as Ronnie Williams went up high and climbed the ladder to bring that one down. And Ron Williams makes a nice catch there, and that's what Tails is going to have to do. He's going to have to get some help from his friends. You know, great plays, great catches, great runs. And you're 24 points down, it's going to take an extraordinary effort by everyone to get back into the football game. Ron Williams gives them one there. He needs to make the key point there, Reggie, and that Tails has thrown the ball a couple of three times where it should have been caught. Mm -hmm. Well, interceptions are respected by the quarterback. They don't say how they happen. Left tackle, Ryan down a few more yards to about the 25, so probably the best sustained drive thus far in the first half by Western. 
think what they have to understand here is that at 24 to nothing, the first thing you have to do is score before half. And when we can get this thing down to a 17-point differential, maybe with an interception, maybe with a run or something in the second half, we get a chance to get back into the game so that in the fourth quarter, we have a chance to win. That's all you can ask for, a chance to win in the fourth quarter. Second down, Bruce Boyd go, he is out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. The only thing I would do now if I were Western is I would move my people a little, a little faster now, almost into the two-minute drill because points are what you need, and you don't need to be walking back to the huddle right now, wasting time. Every second is precious. Get in and out of the huddle quickly. You know you're going to throw the football. Let's do it. Logan with a single setback, three wide receivers get out to the left. Logan off tackle. It's pulled down inside the 17 yard line, and that's more than enough for the first down. And Alan Jones in on the top. He's a big, strong runner who runs straight up. He has got extremely tough legs and, and shoulders. I mean, he's running right into tacklers and he's acting as if they aren't even affecting him. Jones that time kind of latched on and just went for a ride. Mm -hmm. The other thing we might mention, it's a warm day here. I mean, you know, you, you're going to have to have a lot of people if you're going to come back in the football game because you're throwing the football and people are spinning down the field on every play. Let's just run. Tails is tackled at about the 26 yard line. And a marvelous defensive play that time by Mark Dennis, who was just blitzing all the way. You've got to. That, that tails his fall all the way. I mean, he has to see Dennis. He's got to get rid of the football. He can't take a sack right there. That's the last thing he wants to do. Now watch here. Now see, he's got to have some awareness now. And he's looking down the field, and he sees it right now, but he's got to get rid of the football. He's got to react, make a decision quicker than that. Long second down play. Pressure again, Tails steps up in the pocket. Run to about the 20 yard line where he's finally dragged down by Clarence Rose who has played all over the football field here in the first half of play. Two people on this Chippewa's defensive unit. Number 54, Clarence Rose and J.J. Waringa. They have been instrumental in this defensive effort against just an explosive offensive team in Western Michigan. Third down and 13. And this time it's Van Horn and King put out wide on the left. Williams to flank to the right. Boyko is in the slot. Tails with a bullet, pulled in and then dropped. Oh my. Almost a beautiful reception that time for Ulrich King who had it and was stripped of the ball. Oh, they're calling this a fumble. Oh my. We're calling it a fumble. You know, if we watch the replay, we want to determine whether Ulrich King had the football and then touched the ground with one foot in possession of the ball. All right, here's the throw, right at the screen. To me, it appears that he made the catch and it was a fumble. Well, I was going to say, it looked like he had it, but I hesitated. The ball was stripped pretty quickly, but just turnover number five, and it couldn't have come at a worse time for Western. Ball inside the 10-yard line. There's another look at a better angle. Yeah, that's a fumble. You see, he had already caught the ball and taken a couple of steps. Riley tries to break through the initial wave up near the 13-yard line. So Central Michigan having it all of their own way here in the first half. The offense has been effective. The defense has taken the football away. Defense has forced errors, and they have forced at least three of them. Two of them were bad throws. Three of them were forced errors. All quiet here on the western front. Record-breaking crowd. They have to wait probably till the second half for the big comeback. If indeed it does happen. Connelly flashes inside. It's still up at the 15-yard line. But at this point in time, Central's just trying to run a few plays and kick it away. The thing that's Jeff Bender was telling his players now he's in his own den is that, look, fellas, we have a 24-point lead. Half is about to end. We don't want to give this team Western anything 
to get excited about as the hands conclude. So, protect the football. Cover that football up with two hands. Do not allow them to strip the football. Third and two. Riley gets the first down. Oh, well, boy, he's just an excellent runner over the last three weeks. You know, the other thing that Riley does is he's able to do all of this, all those moves and all the quickness and so forth, he's able to do that in a crowd. And so that he doesn't have a lot for them to hit. And he's very short and he's very powerful, so he's just, he has a real contact way of running the football. Don't have the individual numbers on Riley as of yet, but he needed 55 yards to go over 2,000 in his career. Looks is on, Riley runs through the tackle, gets to the corner, spin moves, three sixteen, and just about everything else you can think of to get out to the 28. Let me see where Riley came from. Grand Rapids. We need to go back there and see if there's some more. <laughs> Watch him here. Watch the move. He's already planning his next move right now. See? That was Anthony Strong, number 20, that got faked out. And there he is, number 20, saying, God, Lee, I, I just told myself he wasn't going to fix me. That was that Rucker uh, whirling dervish move <laughs> that he came up with there. Oh, oh I love to set those guys up. <laughs> Make them look bad. <laughs> Until the next time they get you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That payback's always tough. Yeah. Enough for the first down, though. Central Michigan is now gone basically ready to just that power football to try and run out the clock. Well, they know they have a big, strong, veteran offensive line. And with the lead and with Riley, just pound those people up front and let the back do the rest. Under a minute to play here in the first half. You know, if you're an offensive player, receiver, running back, you've already uh, committed to being able to take flows, take punishment. But what you say is, I'm going to do the damage with the football, and I'll give up the hit. Back it goes to Bender. Going deep. What a catch. Ely went up and came down with a football. Oh, my. Kenny Ely with a beautiful reception. And this is going to invoke a dual possession rule, but Kenny Ely never gave up on this play. Some receivers may have quit and may have said, oh, heck, they've got me covered. But the flea flicker, Bender throws this ball perfectly. You're going to see excellent coverage on the left of your screen on Ely. But watch this. Reaches out for the football and great play. Third reception on the day for Ely. And we'll take a break now in the action with just 20 seconds left to go here. And off to Riley inside, grinds it out to about the 17. And uh, we heard Herb Riley saying, let the clock run now. We'll call our final timeout. We'll bring on Kevin Nichols. And they do. So with four seconds left to go here in the first half, Nickel will try it on. Of course, he'll be trying to field goal into a pretty stiff read. He already has a 39 yarder, but it was with the wind in his back. A pro prospect, to say the least. Uh, the only, I would say, drawback at this point in time for Nickel is the fact that uh, he doesn't always kick the football into the end zone on the kickoff, which is what the professionals like. Yeah, but not not that big of a deal because in professional football usually your punter or someone else has deep kicking abilities and they use those people to kick the ball off into the end zone. I know the Cleveland Browns do it. Matt Barr doesn't always kick off on, uh, on kick off. 24 to nothing. 39-year-old field goal by Nichols. Then a 7-yard run by Riley. A 68-yard touchdown reception by Danny Ely. And then a 66-yard touchdown interception run for Marchetti. It has been all Central Michigan. This one will be spotted at the 25, a 35-yard attempt, and into about a 15-mile-an-hour breeze. So on the season, 12 of 14 for Nichols. Plenty of leg, but he misses to the right. So Central Michigan, with an opportunity to add to the lead, comes up empty on the 35 year or 35 yard field goal attempt so it's 24 to nothing and uh, we have michael ray guy down on the sideline 
with her barometer getting nervous, dominant offensive uh, performance and defensive in the first half. Did you feel like you wanted to go after Brad Tails coming to this one? Well, we know we're going to have to contain him because he's a heck of a quarterback, and we've had a very fortunate first half. We're going to have to really play a tough 30 minutes the last part. We know that. You look a little displeased in missing that field goal here at the end. Like that. Didn't like that part of it. we got to get back and get going. Okay, you know, good luck second half. Her barometer, he's also up 44 nothing, but yet wanted that final three to end the first half, Denny and Reggie. Football recovery early on. Yeah, uh, you can see it right there. The arm isn't going forward. It's considered a fumble. Turnovers are giving Central Michigan just outstanding field position. And there was the penalty right there, the theory. Didn't take him long. It went right to Riley here for the short TD run. Riley, who has been the man right from the very beginning, shows you why he's the best runner in this conference. And at least he's the best I've seen. And then after another turnover, it was the old flea flicker. And Ely, after the Kent pass, just made a tremendous run. Yeah, beautiful development of the play. The secondary from Western Michigan thinks that it's a run. They all come up, and of course, Ely got behind everyone. With that pass. And the big play of oh, this one coming in the second quarter, a 66-yard interception return turned in by Gino Marchetti. And the ball was thrown high, but it was tipped by Michael Green, and of course, Gino Marchetti, we talked about this before, he runs kickoffs back, so he knows how to run the football once he catches it, and it's a little too late for Weston. Marchetti was basically picking him up and putting him down. One more look, though, it's a 68-yard touchdown pass from Tank, as you mentioned, was a former quarterback to Ely. Yes. Now watch Ely, he makes a great play here. He catches the football, knows he's going to get catched, and then he buys some time. Watch him. Then out to the right a little bit, just enough space so that he can pick up his seat and touchdown. It's amazing how those receivers have the ability to just get enough room to run away. If we look at the numbers after 30 minutes of football, only five first downs for Central Michigan, but they haven't needed and they've scored on the big play. Well, if you would look at the total yards, you'd say, oh, this is great game. Then look two lines down, turnovers. Four for Western Michigan. That kind of giveaway football. Broncos have had the football nearly 20 minutes, but they haven't been able to do much with it. And point in case, right at the end of the first half, they cough it up on a fumble inside the five. And he also knows when you play on the road, yeah. you've got to get every possible point as we start the second half of play. Rush takes it about five yards deep back into the end zone, and so Central Michigan will turn first down and 10 from their point. If you're Herb Durabity, Reggie Rusty, you uh, go a tad more conservative and really try and keep it on the ground in half number two? Well, this is easy for Durabity because all he does is what he, he does normally. This is a, his, 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 his plan is to run the football, uh, take charge at the line of scrimmage with his offensive line, get the ball to Donnie Rowley as much as possible. If they continue to do that, they'll protect their lead, they'll use the ball. Well, Reggie, you Surprise there, Riley tries to run it up inside, picks up a couple on the play. There's the key for Western Michigan. They must have good first down to pitch because what they need is the football. And they can't let the football if they allow Central to have good first down runs. So first down is going to be a big down in the second half for the Buncos. Ralph Newland, Tony Bates, David Bergeracki, Wyatt, and also Igor on the offensive line for Moved that time by Riley, who was up down at about the 25 yard line. Looks like there might have been a little more room than that, but the hole closed up and hurt. Yeah, because Kevin Thomas in the 47 on the inside linebacker for Winston was right there, reacting a little quicker than he did in the first half, at least on both two shirts. A little close to him. Big play defensively, I would say, for Western Michigan right here. And don't be surprised if Central keeps the ball on the ground, draw play or something safe in the flat to Donnie Lyle. So Riley it goes, the defense up with the play, again, of about a yard. The Central will have to kick it away, and I would think the Central as well will probably try and just do field position things in the third quarter. At some point in the second half of the 24-point lead, your opponent no longer is Western Michigan. Your opponent becomes the clock. When that happens, uh, I'm not sure yet. It's up to Durante to make that decision. But uh, right now, they all they need to do is not turn the football over to Western Football and momentum type game, though. One big play. Let turn it all around. I don't know how he didn't get that kick. Nearly blocked. 
Looney calls for the fair catch an excellent field position at about the 43-yard line. So when we return to Waldo Stadium in Kalamazoo, the Broncos will take over with 13-10 left to go here in the third quarter. Let's go take the shot. Back at Waldo Stadium in Kalamazoo, and the Broncos nearly came up with a play they needed to get the spark. Eric West, left side of your screen, flies into your picture there. I don't know why he didn't get that. His, his intercept angle probably was a little too deep. That's Michael Green, number 34. There's that ankle. They're going to miss, miss him. Hogan is his replacement. First play on offense, and the pitch goes to Bogan. Field block to the outside, but... Uh, James Williams comes to the perimeter and makes the tackle after about a two-yard game. Just a major tackle. Clarence Rose again, number 54. And Weston's going to be caught for holding. One thing after another for them this afternoon, Reggie, they just haven't been able to, to do anything the way they want to. Let's go, Holding on the offense. First down. Well, we've got the official's microphone working now for the second <laughs> half. It's loud and clear. The thing I saw in the first half that hurt Weston a bit was the blocking of the offensive line. I didn't think they did a very good job protecting Kale. A lot of times the quarterback leaps the ball early because he feels pressure. That offensive line is going to have to play better in the second half. On the delay, Hogan hit hard at about the 35 to the 36-yard line. No surprise to see Clarence Rose involved in that tackle. He is just flowing through the football unimpeded. They've got to get somebody to put a helmet on number 54 on the defense, Rose, because as long as he remains unblocked, they're not going to get anything in the running game. Now, without Michael Green, what they miss is the open field and the breakaway ability. Logan will give them good inside running, but he isn't the guy that's going to break something, and that's what Weston needs, a long run from center for a long pass. Second down and long, second and 17. Dale squares up, makes the throw. Marchetti with another interception. He is tackled at the 39-yard line, and Gino Marchetti with his second pick on the afternoon gives the Chippewas excellent field position. And I, and I don't know where he was throwing the football because he threw the football right to Gino Marchetti. I mean, he was standing there right in the lane. Dale just looking. All right, let's take a look at it. On the right side of your screen, let's see who he's looking for. Young, but as you can see, Gino Marchetti was right in front of the intended receiver. Fourth interception on the afternoon for Brad Bales. It's been a disastrous day for him thus far. So Michigan, I guarantee you, will have that tail back now. Riley cuts to the outside. One man to beat on the perimeter. Riley turns it upfield and is finally spun out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Oh, buddy, there's no question about it. The last time we saw Donnie Riley, he was hurting. There was a burst of speed. He literally outran the cutoff angle. Now the cutoff angle is the, the position the defender takes so that he can cut the runner off before a touchdown. You can see number 27, Dan Cunningham, just being outrun through the corner, does get an arm around the shoulder to bring down the very talented Johnny Wright. Riley off for a rest. Darnell Rush checks in number 25. A talented sophomore tailback, Bender. Confused with the last call, decides to use the timeout. So with the 11.56 left to go here in quarter number three, Central Michigan will call for time and set up their offense. If, of course, Central Michigan scores here, if they score seven, I think they'll score something. It'll be extremely difficult for Western to do anything because, one, their defense is, is the best in the Mid-American Conference. And I think what we're looking at is a team right now in Central Michigan that's playing the finest football perhaps in the match and will challenge Eastern for the championship. Those are my picks. Uh -oh. Oh my God, those are my picks. <laughs> you heard it here. Uh, at this point in time, they lost their first three games. Three tough, yeah. tough losses. Yep. And now they're in the process of putting together a three-game winning streak and all those three games, of course, in the conference. And you know what's important to have your team peaking during the Mid-American Conference season, particularly when you're headed into the big ball game. So they've got that game coming up with Eastern, and folks, guess what? We're going to be there. All right.
Mount Pleasant on the 28th of October. Central Michigan and Eastern Michigan. Eastern at home this evening against Liberty College, coached by a man that you play for, Darren Lestadian. First and goal to go from the seventh. Riley in after the rest. Ten move. Is he going to get there? Oh, my. What an effort. He crosses the plane of the goal line. Riley with a seven-yard touchdown run that was all second effort. Give him a set with an F. Okay. He's playing that well, folks. <laughs> he can do no wrong here at Waldo Stadium. I say, if you're a football fan, you just have to appreciate this kind of performance, this sort of effort, as Kevin Thomas and Dan Cunningham couldn't do anything with number 34 as he spins and twists. Hey, look at that. Kraus, number 93, weighs 260, carries them all into the end zone. Extra point, what's the upright? Central Michigan, at this point in time, just thrashing the host Western Michigan Broncos. We'll pause now for this time up. Nothing, Central Michigan on top. Johnny Riley with his second seven yard touchdown run. So you think all great runs are 60 and 70 yards. Not so, folks. This is a great run. Breaks three or four tackles, then carries four. Broncos into the end zone. Incredible. Strong play. Touchdown number two on the afternoon, the 18th of his career. He's also eclipsed the 100-yard barrier for the third consecutive game. Riley has been a handful here today. He's easily the MVP. Alan Boyko breaks through the initial defense. He's streaking down the sidelines and is finally wrapped up right at the 50-yard line. Alan Jones with the tackle on Alan Boyko, and they both wear number 17. This Boyko had to steal this away from his own teammate. This guy said, "Hey, let me do something with this. You guys are the football. You're a blocker. I'm a runner. Give me the yeah. football." He, he knew what to do with it. Yeah. Ran out of room. So good field position. And uh, yes, Brad Tails is still in. All four interceptions. You have to stay with. The guy who brought you to this situation is just part of the learning process. As a freshman, a quick out pattern, that one goes nowhere. Ulrich King is actually going to be thrown for a loss of a yard on the play. Boy, it's our same stuff for Western. You would think that you'd get that easily because Central's going to be backed off. Well, Central Michigan isn't giving up anything. I mean, you throw a quick pass out there and they're on it. Marchetti on the tackle. You know Marchetti has had a field day today. Two interceptions, one run back, 66 yards for a touch. Uh, possible Max defensive player of the week candidate. Riley may be the offensive player of the week. <laughs> Chippewa's having it all their own way. Dale with a good look. Makes the throw, a diving stab in and out of the fingertips of Ron Williams. Sales is 6'3", 193 pounds, and he has a great passing arm. Stands in the pocket real tall. Here's another look at him. Pretty good protection of the quarterback right there. They weren't getting that in the first half. They're going to need plenty of that in the second half because Central knows Weston has to throw. A character gut 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 for the freshman from Windsor, Ontario here this afternoon. It happens to the best of them. There'll be brighter days for him. Moringa chases him out of the pocket. Bogan now on the screen. Gets back to about the 48-yard line, but uh, not nearly enough for the first down. If there are two people that Weston is tired of seeing, one, Tails is tired of seeing Waringa, number 93, and, of course, all Weston runners are tired of seeing Clarence Rose, number 54. Western Michigan has recruited heavily through the years up in Canada, and there you see it number of the players that uh, are playing key roles this season for the Broncos. Central defense tightening up and forcing Lester to kick it again. And this one touches into the end zone. So it will be first down and 10 for the Chippewas of Central Michigan. You know, that'd be one thing we really haven't pointed out if you look back at last week's performance by the Central Michigan defense, they shut out Kent State for the first time. They pushed out since 1980, and right now they're in the process of trying to duplicate the effort against a pretty good offensive team here. I think in college football, if you've got these two things, you 
Sometimes you've got almost assured winners. Great defense and a strong running game. Central has both. It's a proven formula. Herb Garamity winning nearly 70% of the game taking over the helm of the Central Michigan. Of course, the pair of NAC championship. Riley has the great vision, right? He gets up to the line of scrimmage and then determines where the hole is and just kind of flips through there and turns it up here. I see the eye formation is the ideal formation for a player like Johnny Riley. He's deep. He's about eight yards back there. He can see the holes along the line of scrimmage. You just don't say, well, you run into this hole. With a guy like Johnny Riley, you get in the ball deep and let him pick and choose where he wants to go. And he doesn't need a lot of room. No, he doesn't. He's got those good moves inside. Riley feels his way out near the 30, and he coughs it up. Well, the glowing that is isn't perfect, that's all. On Riley, now uh, he jumps the track there and gives up the football and Joel Fengi on the bottom of the sack. Fengi comes up with the football. All right, play number 89, Joel Fengi. For the noise for the football, gets in under that. You see him with the red collar around his neck, under the pile, coming up with the football. Last year, Fengi set a record for force fumbles. Grabbed a hold of a running back and took the ball loose. This time he pounced on Perfect heel position. Western needs something on this drive. Hogan runs left. Gains maybe two yards, and that's about it. The 99, Tim Antonini on that stop on Bowden. Well, I think you need to throw the football, though. I, I know what they're trying to do at this point in time, but there's no time for all that. You've got to throw plan A away and just throw plan B into action with this pass, pass, pass. And you've got to do it with hurry up offense. Nine minutes from the clock rolling in quarter number three. Central Michigan leading 31 to nothing. Yep, here's the prize design. Hale runs out of pocket. Tackled at about the 16 yard line. for the first down. There's Sales looking to throw. Great coverage downfield by Central. And he takes off and he's going to meet up with number 49, Mr. Mark Dennis. An all map choice last year. Another look at it coming right at you. There are the moves of Sales. This guy's going to be a fine player. He's going to be one of the outstanding players in this conference in the next few years. Oh, there's a decision there. Didn't see anybody open, so he just ran with a pump fake looking at the end zone. And... King had turned around his defensive back Kenny Strong with the ball so behind him. One thing that I see that Tails does, and I think he'll get better as he plays, is he passes up the first receiver too often as if it's not there. You know, you've got to let the guys have the football when they're expecting it and trust your judgment. This time it's King and Van Horn split out to the left. Alan Boyd go. The flanker to the right. Drop play, Bogan hit in the backfield, falls forward, and does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Nobody fools him. No, that's a stranger. I call that play a stranger because, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's completely foreign right now to what I think you should be trying to do, uh, to get back into the ball game, or at least get some semblance of attacking. Wild horses couldn't drag him away, Reggie. Oh. Give it to the Bronco. Third down play. Here's the sign, steps up in the pocket, clears it out. The pass is caught at about the six-yard line by Ulrich King. It's very close to the first down. All right, now Dale is a dilemma here, doesn't know whether to run this thing. Watch him pull up right there. He says, no, I don't think I can make it if I run, but this is good. Now he drops it off, and that's number 15, James Williams, making the play. First and goal. Ball spotted just outside the five, so King picked up the necessary yardage. Now out of the eye formation. Boy, hit 
right at the five yard line and just absolutely nowhere to go. That's almost a bizarre looking formation for Western Michigan since they are always in a spread, they're always in pit formations or two receivers to a side. Here they go to the eye formation, close down the split, no running room. Tony McLean stacked up right at the line of scrimmage and then they go back to their normal set with just one running back, running back from Hogan. The amazing thing about the defense today by Central Michigan is that, you know, they play a three-man line. And they've been able to put pressure on the passer with the three-man line as well as cover well downfield. Chippewas just do not want anybody in their end zone. Good fundamental defense right there. It's one of the things that a defense line must do when a quarterback takes a three-step drop. Watch. One, two, three. Now this means a short pass is coming. Watch. Everybody get your hands up now. Guess who? Where it goes. Yes. Actually, that time you could say he had a nose for the football. He got hit right in the side of the head. Yes. Western Michigan calls for time. They don't want to squander this opportunity. 31 to nothing. Uncle Michigan on top of the first quarter. One thing I'm very impressed with is Central is very well coached they are. They are a very well coordinated football team. As I said a couple of plays ago, they're able to get pressure to the three man line and then get good coverage in the secondary and then linebackers are all over the place. Nice combination, you're right, and defensively is one that seems to work pretty well. Now well, you see the chemistry, the conversation between Brad Tails and Al Moldy, and it was funny because after he threw the fourth interception, Reggie, I watched him when he ran off the field. The first person went right up to him was Al Moldy. The same thing, grabbed him around the shoulder, pulled him close to him and said, hey, relax, you're doing interception, you may have to say, but you better the next time. Well, Mosey knows that uh, Sales is his man and he's going to be playing three more years here. And I think he knew that this would be a season which they would actually build. They lost a lot of great players on offense last year. No question. Only really three or four starters on both sides of the football total this year for Western. Fourth down play. Sales waits for the clearing pattern and it's intercepted in the end zone by James Williams. Oh, my goodness. Interception number five on the day for that Chippewa secondary. I want somebody to find out what the interception record is in the Main American Times because with a long time left, they may reach it. The celebration continues. We'll pause now for this timeout. And we'll be back momentarily. 6.08 left to go in the third quarter. Central 31 and less than nothing. Central Michigan leading 31 to nothing with 6.08 left to go in the third quarter of play. Travel range through Continental, which has a new foreign policy offering upgrades and vacation certificates for first and business class international passengers. Call Continental for details. First and ten for the Chippewas, who just recorded their fifth interception on the game and that ties an MAC record set by the Miami Redskins. Well, we know it ties a record. <laughs> Probably close to a record uh, in the MAC Conference, too. Well, oh, you're saying that uh, it's a central record of five interceptions against Miami? Well, I know it's a Western. It's a Western record, five interceptions uh, that they have thrown. Steve Doolittle had five against Miami in 1972. Okay. Well, we got that squared away. Second down. I don't want to confuse anybody. No, no. I don't want to give anybody credit. Information. Riley started to the inside, ran through one would-be tackler, but Stangy finally grabbed a hold of him and don't run through him very often. 
No, I guess we ought to start talking about the tackle who's playing opposite Smingy because he's having an outstanding day. We have not talked a great deal about Smingy, and if you listen to what professional people say, he is the guy that's going to be having a lot of money in his pocket this time next year. So somebody's doing an excellent job on him. John Kidoy, the 290-pound left tackle, and Tony Bates, the 260-pound left guard, double-teaming him most of the afternoon. It's doing an effective job. Bender. Down the sideline it goes to Kench. Nice timing pattern that time. First down and 10 for the kick. The Chips haven't had to throw the football much today, but when they have thrown it, it has been usually a big play because you've got so many people from Western up around the line of scrimmage. When you see Bender, Kench makes a nice grab. Kench is a tall receiver, 6'3", and he has nice hands, and you know he can throw the football. He threw a touchdown pass in the first pass. on the move to about the 46 yard line. Central Michigan, a team right now that's uh, maybe playing better than any other club in the Mid-American Conference after that 0-3 start. They have really come back strong. I think so because I think they are perhaps the best talent in the Mid-American Conference. Their team speed is extraordinary and they've got uh, this guy, number 34, to do the running for them. Or some would say that Ball State, or Eastern Michigan, is a better ball club. Only Don't time anybody time. get mad at me. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just telling you what I see. <laughs> well, we got some great games coming up, though. Oh, yeah. The rest of the games this year are the to be announced games, of course, and uh, we'll be pairing up uh, the key games each week in the conference. The beauty of that, folks, is we're going to take you where the action is. Next week, Bowling Green at Eastern Michigan. 12.30 start. Following week, it's up to Mount Pleasant, Eastern Michigan at Central Michigan. Riley on the pitch. Wrapped up at about the 50-yard line. will bring up a fourth down play. There you see the graphic. The 21st at 1230 Eastern Time, Bowling Green at Eastern Michigan. Right here, Sea Stadium. BG playing much better as of late. They're tangling with Toledo today. And the following week up in Mount Pleasant. There's a good chance you might be heading to Muncie on the fourth. And the thing about Bowling Green is they are dangerous because passing teams are, are, are can do that to you with Hurd and Thornton. I mean, they can beat anybody on any given deck. Louie waving for the fair catch. Not, not to field this one. And it has been that kind of a day. Uh, big mistake not to catch the football. Downing it at the sixth yard line of Central Michigan special teams. And this has been an absolute dream ball game for Herb Duramity, who I don't think coming into this one yesterday after practice felt there was any way it would go this way. I can't wait to see what Herb has to say at the end of the ball game. He was, uh, I think he'll be a, a little bit more affable. Yes. He was uh, trying to look for the right word. This football team, I mean, if, if you want to use a word to describe it, has been thoroughly dominant today. Yes. Effective in all facets of the game. Just guarding would have been the word for him in that. <laughs> <laughs> Bogan grinds up three tough yards, make it four out past the 10 to about the 11-yard line. You know, you touched on an interesting point too, Reggie, when talking about Western Michigan, and we developed the story about the freshman quarterback and how he's making mistakes, but there really have been wholesale changes on both sides of the football from a year ago when they didn't win the Mid-American Conference. And they did it with offense a year ago. Of course, they had the Mid-American Conference uh, Player of the Year, Tony Kimbrough, and they just literally whipped people on the offensive side of the football. Let me, let me mention this because I think it's very important when you have a freshman quarterback. And Al Moldy should be thinking about this. I don't know if he is or not, but I'd be very concerned about stars and my freshman or my freshman quarterback Spikey about his performance in this ball game. And I probably would keep him out of any further uh, situations where he might throw the football. You don't know what that's going to do to him for, for the future. James Cooper. Looks like he might have uh, 
ended up with a cramp in his left leg after the play on the opening running play. He's taken off the field. Second down and six. Over the middle. And Kersley got separated from the football on a major league hit. Developed by David Johnson. Beautiful pass. And Copley ran a pretty nice pattern. and watch it's going to come right at you. You're going to see the tight spiral on the football. Ball gets there in a hurry. Now wham! David Johnson making the receiver pay the price. Good protection. There's the delivery again. Now watch, right side of your screen. This is what you have to get set for if you're a receiver. You know this is coming. You have to catch the football. You're going to get hit even if you don't catch it. with a quick drop, throws the out batter. Boyko with a beautiful catch, but it's going to be at least two yards shy of the first half. And we'll bring on the punting unit now for Western Michigan with 1.30 left to go here in the third quarter. Well, Al Moley, I think, thought about that for a moment on the fourth down at about two and then said, now the way things are going today, that'd be crazy. Well, he can't win this football game. As I said, I think the thing that they should be doing is just giving the, the, the football team an opportunity to do some good things here and help get something accomplished if he can't win. Low driving kick. Buddy takes it at the 45, turns it up, across midfield, down to about the 43-yard line, which is where Central Michigan will start first down the kick. And a frustrating afternoon for the offense of Western Michigan. Defensively, they have done a pretty good job, but it's been the big plays, the turnovers, that have just broken their back. Mm -hmm. Well, they've, uh, Central Michigan's been working with a short field all day. And when they have gotten the football via the turnover, they haven't had a car to go. But and additionally, they have uh, taken those balls, interceptions, and so forth back for touchdowns. Mentioned that just tough game over there in Bowling Green, 14 to 13. Darnell Rush got to the line of scrimmage, and uh, there was nothing there. You watch the Central Michigan players when their tails have had the football, whether it be Riley or Rush. People are throwing blocks 10, 15 yards down the field, anticipating that one of those runners is going to break something. Just watch that last play, number 50, Mark Trevozian for Western Michigan and Tony Bates and Joe Connolly all over him. They were still blocking him 10 yards downfield. On the delay, Darnell Rush gets to the line of scrimmage. What you like to see is a running back who gets in traffic and then covers up with the football if you get that cut. Yes, uh, they have excellent depth at that position too. And if there's one thing I'd like to say about the offensive line work today is that they finish off blocks. They don't just hit a guy and release. They sustain their blocking. And we finish up the third quarter of play here from Kalamazoo. And we'll pause now for this timeout. One quarter to go left here in Kalamazoo. 31 to nothing. Central Michigan looking for their third consecutive win in the Mid-American Cup. A former national sportscaster of the year and also a former Central Michigan Chippewa, Dick Hensburg, one more and the HP Grant. You don't get too much better than Mr. Enberg. You know, you've had a chance to work, work with him, Reggie. Well, yeah. And Dick, if you're, you're watching, I know you like this. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be loving the fact that the Chippewas are on top. Bender on a cutting pattern throws over the head of Kenny Ely on the third down play. So the Chippewas will have to give it up on the opening play here of the fourth quarter. Right out of Dick is watching. What do you think about my play-by-play -play partner, Dick? All right, let's take a look at three fours of play. He's done him much good. And with the wind at his back, winners think he's going to wait until time runs out and fly the five-yard penalty. He 
Anything else I know that's bad. The only thing you need to be able to do is just... You've got dead ball delays on the offense. You've got to say we want a five-yarder. Go ahead, we'll go ahead, five, move it back. Right. No, uh, Rather than wait 30 seconds. But I guess we do this for the Pierce. It's like right. Pierce and the baseball face. If you don't have, if, you know, traditionally walking, set him down the first base. Why waste time? Right. Right. So don't you remember that one World Series game between Cincinnati and Boston? When they were kind of intentionally walking guy and reached out and clapped for a yeah. little bit? I remember that. Sure, that's why you do it. it happens once every 48 years, Randy. <laughs> coming after this. They, they've been close on occasion. They may get this. Here they come. Oh. Looney waves for the fair catch. And Western Michigan starts first down with 10 inside their 10. That was Eric West once again, number 35. The Western who almost got it. I think he's got to take a little sharper angle to the foot. Don't go for where the punter is, but go for where he will be. And when you look back on this one, if memory serves me correctly, Central Michigan was just one drop of football and a fumble today. Other than that, they really haven't done anything wrong. Oh, they played outstanding football. And they never let Weston into the football game at the outset. That was a key. That didn't take long. Started with a quick Kevin Nickel field goal, and then about two minutes later, they had their first touchdown. After the turnover. The play goes for maybe a game of a half. Don't forget to stay tuned to the Sports Channel following today's game for more NAC action as the Bobcats of Ohio University take on the Redskins of Miami. That went down there at Oxford. This game is not available in all areas, so you'll have to consult your local ocean. Oh, really? No game on the play. It brings up second down about that. Copley had it and dropped it, just didn't concentrate on the ball as it came to his hand. It appears to me that Central Michigan has caught more tails and passes than the Broncos had. And he's thrown, hey, that's got to be five. At least five of his passes today. Super is dropping it. Well, that's for a stat. Central Michigan, through five games, Reggie coming into this one and intercepted four balls. And then he's doubled the total. Big, big day for the defense. by Ulrich King. For a moment I thought that there would be another interception. I watched right in the middle of the screen, you're going to see number two run Mike Pattern, come right down the linebacker, just lead into the vacated area by Tails, and Ulrich King just stayed with that football and comes up with a big reception, gets him out of the hole. The Western Michigan fan, you're hoping to turn down the drive the point so that you don't get shut out here this afternoon moving along the offensive and defensive line of scrimmage. Now Scott Thomas, number 60, the defender did not make contact, so number 60, Scott Thomas, has to stay in that two-point stance. You cannot get up out of that Oh, he's got dead ball offside over here, dead ball alien procedure over here, they offset, they offset. Well, that's a real one when they do that. Yep. Two guys doing something illegal at the same time. Oh, it's got caught. No first down at that. Perfect afternoon. 75, 80 degrees. Breeze. Are you starting to turn here in Kalamazoo? Tails with Paul Day to look for a receiver. And then he ends up throwing out of the hands of David Johnson with another Harry Patrick. Johnson turned back up field. Somebody better come up and tackle him. He'll take this one for a touchdown. And intercepted number six. And that secondary today has just absolutely decimated tail. I would have preferred that he not do that. There's no, there's no need taking a record like that. Well, we'll take a break in the action here with 13. 27 left, Central has the ball again, due to intersection number 6 on the afternoon. The 
solitude of a freshman quarterback who has just crossed his sixth interception. You notice there's nobody there talking to him. Well, he's in the record book for all the wrong reasons. Tough afternoon for that young man. Tough week of practice coming up. Riley breaks free. Into the secondary, and the flag went up as he crossed the 40 yard line. John Kinoy, I think, is going to get called holding here. Even the appears to cancel the ball. Western will accept the penalty. We're told uh, the crowd this afternoon in excess of 31,000. So it doesn't break the all-time record, but it'll be probably in the top five. Most of them are thinking about heading home a little early. Mm -hmm. Some of them have already done so. First down and 18 now for the Chippewas, who dominated this game from start to finish. A lot of the has gotten Johnny Riley back into this ball game. I think he wants to get this thing over there. Bender looks left, throws it over the middle to Kent, who comes up with a beautiful running grab. And Andrew Riley, we haven't spoken much about him this afternoon, but we haven't had to because the defense has been the story along with Riley. But just when you start thinking about those guys, Bender steps up and makes the nice throw. Bender, who is second in the Mid-American Conference with total offense, can throw the football as well as anybody if he has to, but he has the luxury of a Donnie Rowley in the backfield, so he's got the kind of balance between run and pass that most offensive coaches look for. Bender played last year at the freshman. He didn't have a few rough outings, so I'm certain that he can sympathize with Mr. Taylor. Riley crunches through the right side of the line for about five more yards. Jeff Bender is a pre-med chemistry major and has an accumulated average of about 3.7 rates. He's a bright guy and an excellent athlete and her Duramity, I don't think, could ask for a better quarterback. Shows that leadership ability in that huddle that's so important in a quarterback. You have to have guys that'll walk down a dark alley with you with nothing in their hands. Seems to make pretty good selections as far as where he wants to throw the ball. He's lost only four interceptions on the season coming into this one. For Kent on the quick out pattern, Kent gets a pat on the back and shoved out of bounds at about the 42. Bob Kent with 13 receptions on the season. I wonder if Sir Bologna is going to give some of backup people an opportunity to play in this ball game. 31 nothing. Your football team is teasing, but you also want to be careful about injuries. And injuries do occur at a time like this when people have nothing to lose and there's some frustration going on out there. Thank you for taking the sports channel for the best in live NHL action tonight at 8.30 at Chicago and St. Louis. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock, Calgary and Philadelphia. Tuesday evening at 7.30 at Chicago and the New York Rangers. And then Wednesday night at 7.30, Calgary. And the Canadiens. Of course, all of these games aren't available in all areas, so you want to make sure you consult your local listings to find out which NHL game you'll be able to tune in this coming week. First and ten for the tip. Bender wrapped up and slammed to the turf, and Sean Mulhern wasn't fooled in any way, shape, or form. You made an interesting point there, Reggie, about resting the troops, maybe uh, doing a little substituting. Last week against Kent State, when Riley rushed for 164, Herb told me yesterday, he said, he watched his number of carries. After three quarters, he had like 24 carries. He took him out of the ball game because he wanted to make sure he was ready for this week. It's important, and I think and he's had enough work in this ball game, too, but I know what Romney is trying to do. He wants his best guy in there, so he's run this clock out and you're trying to do that, but certainly Johnny Rowley is the man that gets the yardage for you and gets the first down. Central Michigan trying to even up its record overall of 3-3 on the season. I don't want to say it, but look at this. Riley's going to check out the lineup for a while. He's suffered ankle knee and hip pointer problems. 
he's all right. But, uh, I don't think we'll see him again. There's no reason to go in the left and motion. Let's see what happens here. And there was pressure from the back side, makes the throw, but gets hit in the process. And we're going to bring up a fourth down for Georgia. He doesn't rush that pass because Swingers is all over him. He know he went down that time. Kevin Nichols jumps into the lineup. A good 10 to 15 mile an hour breeze in his back. Let's see, they were fired at the 44. A 54 yard attempt, and on the season, Nichols is two for two with a G in 15 yard field goal. And just like this one will determine how well. Nickel was thought of by the NFL scout. On the right, he drills it. A 54 yard field goal for Kevin Nickel, and that's basically the icing on the cake. I mean, that baby had plenty of room left. And that would have been good from 64 yards. We'll pause now for this timeout. And we'll be back to all those stadiums in Kalamazoo momentarily. 34 to nothing. Jimbo Warren's on top. Nickel gets plenty of foot into this one as well. Ulrich King catches it on the back line. Western will start first and ten from the 20 yard line. They play 27 yards under three minutes. Nickel with his longest field goal of the season. Nickel is the kind of guy that may be a deciding factor for his position as he starts getting to the big ball game where the competition evens up. Field goal kickers then may make a difference. So he has tremendous experience and obviously a very effective and accurate. A nice guy to have in your corner when you do get into a tough situation. Nice marriage type performance for number 15 this afternoon. Well, really interception number seven that time. And the one thing that uh, I've noticed today with Tails is that basically he can tie with his throws. He's, he's bringing the ball over top and it's drifting on, it's floating on. It's, I don't know if it's a, it's a delivery flaw or something like that, but just one of those days where he just can't seem to get the football down. But he's, but he's throwing it into a breeze as well, that creates problems. Mm -hmm. He's all hanging up on you. David Johnson again. Johnson has a pair of picks on the day. He was going for the, uh, the hat trick there. <laughs> Johnson's down on the field. Third to Romney, but he's standing down to the field. Instead of just fine football players all across the state, he seems to have a lock on Grand Rapids and Flint. David Johnson, who is going to finish the last time, is going to have some strength Central High School. Hey, while we've got a moment, uh, we'll head down south now to Oxford, Ohio, and check in with Bob Long and Dennis O'Kelly. We welcome those of you who are watching the live sports channel match game of the week between Central Michigan and Western Michigan. Here in Oxford, our score right now, Ohio U 9 and Miami 7, with about 13 minutes left in the third quarter. That play goes for about a five-yard loss as Jack Leader and Bill Garrett come up to show the fullback Thornton uh, that time, or Pointon rather. And we now send you back to Kalamazoo with Denny Schreiner and Reggie Rucker. Welcome back to Kalamazoo. Nice ball in down in Oxford. Pressure is on. Tails gets it away though. Over King, the big play guy, cuts it back up, makes the hurdle move, and finally gets tackled at about the 40 yard line. That was some action there for number two, huh? <laughs> this is an exciting play. Very good in the open field. Yeah, good reflexes you saw last time you made that uh, behind the back catch. Here's just a crossing pattern, and 
or a team right now is going to do something I probably wouldn't do when you're only 160 pounds, go airborne. Uh, not when there's people in the neighborhood. And they have the wrong color jerseys on. <laughs> First down, though. Drills this pass, he's complete off the shoulder pass of the bell horn, the bell horn. And that's a situation where sales have to learn that you don't drill that. That just requires a little touch. If you leave the receiver into the ball, let him catch it and run with it. A breakdown of the interception this afternoon. Curtis, the only one that isn't a secondary player. Mitch Curtis, one of these starting inside linebackers. Secondary has got a field deck here today. Left side of the pocket. Makes the throw. Williams comes up with a catch. Inside the 45 at the 43 yard line. Excellent production that time. Where it fails left the pocket. The central is dropping more people now. And coverage because they just want to get into prevent defense and try to preserve the shutout. When you get that kind of defense, there are a lot of lanes in there. Williams found one. Tail got it to him. Play. Hogan has to run through, breaks one tackle, spins inside the 30 to about the 40 You know, quarterbacks to be successful in football have to have short memory. They can't afford to be able to dwell on things that happen. But this is the kind of football game I'm afraid that no matter what kind of success Hale has here at Western Michigan, he's going to be able to look back and say, and I remember the day I get central after the six interceptions. That's when you want a quick case of that amnesia. <laughs> Convenient amnesia. Ohio State coming back. Yep. Scores from around the league. The lead of them beat Deer still wrapped up at the tight ball game. Boy, when those two schools go at each other, I don't care if it's been DG or Toledo. It's a slugfest. I don't just hear crowd rivals listen to them. What was it? I read a story or a couple of tips from Alan Chamberlain, the sports information director at the home office in Toledo, where whether it would be Toledo or BG, whoever went to the opposing field, it's been like 10 years since the visitors hit court section out. Last it was tough going. But obviously, uh, the visitors, Toledo, put at least one on the board this afternoon. I mean, when you come into their place, don't even think about it. Home field advantage just uh, has not been an advantage here today, <laughs> Mr. Rucker. No. They have been soundly outplayed by Central Michigan. They caught over the middle. Oh, man, that's a fumble. Ball scores loose, and don't tell me. Central Michigan has the football. I'm trying to unpack people. Weston hangs on to the football. Well, they're calling it Western football. Bruce Joyko makes the catch here. Well, I tell you what, that's a fumble. That's a gift for Western one of the few they've had today. People are trying to hang on to their shutout, but the West of Michigan trying to get that few things off the board. Better late than never. Bales looks right, comes back to the left. Nice catch on the goal line. Not quite in for the score. Very close. Coakley had it right about the one foot line, and that's where they're going to down the football. You know, they're defending that goal line against Weston like Weston stole something from them. They just don't want to give up a score. What a lot of pride there is in the Central Michigan team. I mean, you would say, oh, come on, let them score. But these guys are really, watch how fiercely they play defense in here. Got out to take a week ago, and that's the Broncos out with 7.65 left to go. And this one is going to the top, and he scores. So for Brad Hales, that's close. That's right 
hot this afternoon and an otherwise dismal day. Maybe it's all fitting that Sam is carries the ball for the touchdown himself. Because it's been such a tough day, and of course it hasn't been all his doing. He's had people drop balls on him, Preston hasn't been there at times. If you see him right now, he's the guy that at least averts the shutout for Winston. Broncos will more than likely go for two. Coach Moldy looking on. You might call him the stoic. There you go, Moldy. It's not a V for victory. That's two for the two-point try. On the left hash mark. That's the ball for Moldy to the right. As I said, I think it's in the short side of the field. Hogan gets trapped in about the one yard line. Oh, Central Michigan cuts down the two-point conversion. And leads handily in this one, 34 to 6. Suspect we might be an onside kick. No question about it. If they win for two, they ought to go for the onside. Yeah. Very surprising day here. I, I knew that Western Michigan was young on offense, but their skill level was very high. Coming in, I thought as well as they spread the ball and get it around, they would provide some problems for Central Michigan defensively, but the Chippewas have been there almost before Western ran the play. Central appeared to have just a perfect game plan. They came out and they started putting pressure on Tails to begin with. They confused him. They created a lot of indecision in the freshman quarterback. They got him off to a rough start, and Tails never recovered. And now we'll check in with Michael Rega on the sideline. Yeah, Denny and Reggie, you know, a lot of times it's not just football players who come up with war wounds in this Kimmel College mm -hmm. football. This is Bob Silvery from Plymouth, Michigan. He should be wearing this place of this officiating crew today. Bob, you're not in action. Why not? Now, last week against Plato and Eastern, I got uh, hit playing umpire in the middle. And they tore out the uh, posterior crucial ligament on my knee. So I'm out for about three weeks. We'll say that again. Not a, what a very pleasant uh, hit. <laughs> posterior crucial ligament in yeah. that knee. Yeah, the inside of my knee. And that means that you've got a couple weeks on the DL, actually, correct? That's right. Well, I'm hoping to get back. I'm with my guys. All right, Bob. You're going into moral support, so thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. So there you see it, Danny and Reggie. I mean, you got to be tough. And when you wear the zebra stripes, you got to be ready to bang in Bob, too. Otherwise, you wind up on the DL like Bob Silver. Hey, Michael. Yes. Uh, being a guy who has had knee surgery, surgery, I think he means the cruciate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's the crucible. Right. You're, you're the scholar of the bunch. You're the man that knows that stuff. Thank you so much for that report, Dr. Ray Guy. <laughs> Would you like to continue to elaborate on the Naughty operation, Mr. Rucker? Or? No, I, I had five. Okay. You had five knee operations? Yeah. yeah. I'll go through that one day with you. Wow. No, that's right. Me. You had five operations? Yeah. Well, maybe we can chat on the flight home. <laughs> New quarterback for Central Michigan, why not? Bender is done for the afternoon and did a superb job. And so Randy Levels, a senior out of Flint Central, will take over the control. And this is a position for a backup quarterback where uh, at least a good little playing time. But you've got to stay sharp and ready just in case something happens to the number one. And he's moved that offensive line a bit, too. So. I think he's rewarded that offensive team for the job well done because they played extremely well. So did the defense, so did the kicking game. You couldn't ask for a better performance from a football team than her calamities got the two commissioners done. Basically, you could probably play a phrase, but uh, the entire team earned it. Yeah. I'll say it, they earned it. Kind of boy. Next week at Ryanair Stadium, 12.30. Inside, the Nice up to gut it very close to a first down. Yeah. 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 hope we have weather like this this week and this morning. Michigan, the procedure on the offense, repeat third down. It could be a test of the number one and number two teams in the conference at that stage. Of course, don't count out ball state. Uh, Cardinals, I 
a frustrating day. We were really excited about this matchup. I thought it was going to be one of those afternoons where Mike went out of the final series. And two very explosive teams, classic passing teams, oh, yeah. and rushing teams, and great defensive personnel. And our crew did an outstanding job today. And enjoy these games when they're basking in the sunshine as well. I'm sure a little later on in the season, they'll have to put up with the snow flurry. So we'll think we got back to the line of scrimmage, let alone got the first half. Well, those guys in our crew will be happy to know that we have a sandwich for them all. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pay them with sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, they'll be excited about that. Uh, it's going to be a good bus ride back to... Mount Pleasant for oh, the Chippewas. That's what, two hours and 15, two hours and 20 minutes drive. And yeah, they'll be hooping it up all the way back. And we talked about this at the beginning of the program. You know, this is an important ball game because bragging rights in this part of the state for recruits. That's an important part of keeping the continuity of the franchise. And now we'll uh, take a break here in the action. There's 2.33 left to go in this for 34 to 6 Central Michigan en route to winning here in Kalamazoo. A 1988 bronze medalist and, of course, the 14th overall selection in the 1988 NBA draft, Central Michigan, Dan Marling, and what an outstanding performer he was for the Chippewa. I also give a pat on the back to our spider, Lewis Bagley, here this afternoon. I couldn't have operated without him. Over the middle, all just falls incomplete. I've said that a few times this afternoon, Lady Rucker. Yeah, I just think that at this point you get out of the football game. Western Michigan. People attempting to throw the football in. I hate to see the interception on the cup. That's just way too bad. That ball is bouncing field to the air. I'll tell you what, don't think those don't think those second stringers in that uh, secondary for Central Michigan are looking to yeah. take one of those all the way. They wanted this throw because they could break a school record with interception on the cup. I'm looking for it. Pressure. Dale keeps looking. Fires this one incomplete at about midfield. Don't forget to stay tuned to Sports Channel following today's game for more MAC action as the Bobcats of Ohio University take on the Redskins of Miami University. The game is not available in all areas, so check your local listings and the game will be seen in its entirety. Boy, they got a very close game going on right now and actually the last score we had was nine to seven Ohio University on top of Miami. Both of those teams looking for their initial and they see the three of the season. Third ten. Dale goes oh, big time pressure. Tries to get it out to his running back. That doesn't work. So it brings up four ten. Like Tapper all over Dale in the 91. And number nine is Kurt Pauley. Western have to kick it away. That's their final possession of this one. A 39-yard field goal provided by Kevin Nickel opened up the scoring. Johnny Riley with a couple of seven-yard touchdown runs, a 68-yard pinch to Kenny Ely touchdown pass. Marchetti with an interception return of 68 yards for a touchdown. A big day for Central Michigan. Jay Muddy tries to take advantage of the Just bumped out of bounds and put it back. Pretty much can close the book on this one. A dominating victory for Central Michigan. And now uh, head back to Mount Pleasant. Three and three. But uh, three and one in the Mid-American Conference. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, we're looking forward to two weeks from now. Certainly we are. Oh yeah. We don't know what's going to happen next week, obviously, but I think we're going to have just a marquee kind of a ball game for you in Central Michigan. Next week, the third and fourth TG receivers. They are really something. Eric played out near the 40-yard line, and now we've got a flag being crossed. A little extra particular activity after the play is over. at the folks that are uh, involved in putting together the telecast and what a marvelous job they do, our technical crew. No turnovers for them today.
personal foul being called against someone on the defensive side of the football. Down. Number 